Hi, and welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video, we'll be talking about security in BLE. We'll be covering the topic of security in two parts. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include the most common security concerns, an overview of security in BLE, and finally we'll cover some of the most common misconceptions and myths about security in BLE. There are a few concerns regarding security in any system. First, authentication. Authentication is proof that the other side is in fact who they claim they are. For example, if you're connecting to a BLE device, you want to be sure that you're actually connecting to the device of interest and not some other malicious side that's claiming to be that device. The second concern is integrity, which ensures us that the data received is free from corruption and tampering by unauthorized devices. Another security concern is confidentiality, meaning that the data is not readable by unauthorized parties. Last but not least, privacy, which is concerned with how private the communication is and the inability for others to track us and track our devices as well. Based on these concerns, some of the most common types of attacks include passive eavesdropping, which describes when a malicious device listens in on the data between the two other devices and is able to understand that data, usually happens by having access to the encryption key in the case the data is encrypted. A second type of attack is active eavesdropping, or what's also called a man-in-the-middle MITM attack. In this type of attack, the malicious device impersonates both devices that are on each side, intercepting the communication between them, routing it so that they do not realize that the attack is happening, and possibly even injecting data into the communication packets. The last attack we want to mention has to do with privacy and identity tracking. In this type of attack, the devices and users are tracked by the Bluetooth address. So now that we've covered some high-level concepts regarding security and attacks, let's take a look at how BLE addresses these concerns. Here's a diagram showing the architecture of Bluetooth Low Energy. The module responsible for security is the Security Manager, or SM for short. The Security Manager defines the protocols and algorithms used for generating and exchanging the keys to secure the channel of communication between two BLE devices. It utilizes the 128-bit AES encryption algorithm, which is a symmetric key algorithm, meaning that the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt the data on both sides. It is always initiated by the master, which sends a pairing request to the slave, and in some cases the slave can request security to be established between the two devices, in to which the master may choose to respond by sending the pairing request message. To better understand how security works in BLE, there are two main concepts that we need to cover, pairing and bonding. Pairing is a temporary security measure that does not persist across connections. This means it has to be initiated and established each time the two devices reconnect to each other. The one exception is when bonding occurs between the two devices, which we'll talk about shortly. Now, pairing starts with exchanging the I.O. capabilities of each device, as well as the MITM protection requirements. After this, the devices exchange or generate a temporary key, which along with other random values, get used to generate the short-term key, or STK for short. The short-term key is then used to encrypt the data communication between the two devices. Bonding, on the other hand, persists across connections, allowing the devices to bypass the pairing phase on subsequent connections. In order to bond two devices to each other though, they must go through the pairing phase once. Bonding uses a long-term key that's stored on each of the devices and used to encrypt the communication channel between them. Some of the other keys and values that are exchanged by the bonding process include the Connection Signature Resolving Key or CSRK, which is used to sign and verify transmitted data, the Identity Resolving Key, or IRK, used to resolve private addresses, and the Encrypted Diversifier, EDIV, and Random Number, RAND, which are used to create and identify the LTK. Here's a diagram showing the different phases of security establishment between two BLE devices. Phase 1 and 2 together are called the pairing phase. 
As we can see here, phase one involves the optional security request message sent from the slave, the pairing request and response messages, which involve the exchange of the IO capabilities, the authentication requirements and key requirements. Phase two handles the exchange of the temporary key and other random values that are all then used to generate the SDK on each side. Phase 3 is optional and is performed only when the bonding is required by the two devices. This is the phase where the values and keys such as the EDIV, the RAND, LTK, CSRK and IRK are exchanged between the devices. Now that we have a better idea of what the process of securing a connection looks like, one may wonder how secure is BLE and how well does it protect our data and the communication between two devices. Unfortunately, the answer is not quite simple. It all depends on a few factors. Some of these include the I.O. capabilities of the devices in question, such as the existence of a display, keyboard, and physical keys that could be used to request confirmation from the user of displayed matching values on both ends. Another factor is the existence of an out-of-band communication channel between the devices. In the case where the I.O. capabilities are limited on the devices, the out-of-band channel can be used to exchange the sensitive values and keys, making the process more secure. The last factor is the version of Bluetooth used on both devices. If Bluetooth version 4.2 or later is used, then the process can be secured even further, as we'll learn about in an upcoming video. Finally, let's talk about some of the misconceptions regarding BLE security. The first one states that using Bluetooth 4.2 is 100% secure. Now it's obvious that there is no such thing as 100% secure, however utilizing Bluetooth 4.2 definitely improves the security, but there are different levels within Bluetooth 4.2 and simply using it does not guarantee enhanced security over version 4.1 and earlier. The second misconception states that using LE secure connections is secure. The LE Secure Connections is a new and enhanced security process that was introduced in Bluetooth 4.2. It utilizes the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman algorithm, which allows two devices to generate a shared key on each side while preventing an eavesdropper from being able to figure out that shared key. But utilizing this does not necessarily guarantee high security. The strength of the security also depends on the randomness used to generate the keys used in the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman process. Another aspect that affects the strength of the security is the storage of the keys and how possible it is for someone to gain access to those keys. At the opposite end, another misconception that you may find mentioned in articles is that Bluetooth is completely vulnerable and insecure. Again, there is no such thing as 100% secure, but with Bluetooth 4.2, most of the security flaws that were discovered by researchers have been addressed, and it lays a strong foundation for implementing security that could protect against attacks and access to data in mission-critical applications, such as medical devices. In the next video, we'll get into security in more detail. We'll compare the different BLE versions in terms of security, we'll look at legacy pairing as well as secure connections pairing, We'll also look at how to secure your BLE application. And finally, we'll go over privacy in BLE. To learn more about Elysis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elysis.com. Have a need for training or consulting services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.